Yeah, so I guess I didn't talk about my background experience with R, but I've been probably working in R for about four years exclusively. I've done a little bit of Python. Um, I I like R a little bit better. There's no there's no reason behind that. I just I just gravitate more to that. Um, but I have some experience working with Python a little bit, and then I've done some stuff in Bash, stuff like that. But I am not a computer scientist by any means, so I am still learning. Um, cool. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to finish up our conversation of chapter 14 strings. Uh, my focus here, well, we already kind of went over my five minute icebreaker, which we already kind of talked about our jobs in a little bit in school. So I don't think we need to do this one. But um, what I'm going to kind of remind everybody is just our quick housekeeping reminders. Uh, most of us have, have been around for a while. So um, the one that I always want to highlight and make sure is if we need to slow down and discuss something, just let me know. Uh, especially if I get something wrong, please correct me because, again, I'm still learning some of this stuff too, especially with regular expressions. So if there is something I missed, just let me know. If there's something you need to know more about, ask. You know, you're not going to hurt my feelings in any way for stopping me um, presenting. Uh, so we hey, also, oh, go ahead. Can you share your screen? Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm talking into the ether. Sorry. Uh, let me share my screen here real quick. So thanks, Ryan, for stopping me and correcting me. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, so here's just our quick housekeeping reminders. So, um, yeah, so uh, the big things that I want to highlight is obviously stop me if you need to. And then, you know, plan on teaching some of the lessons. Uh, it's a good opportunity to kind of learn extra. Uh, Ryan, I think I have a couple more that I'm going to take on and let you know about, but anybody else in this group, please be welcome to take it. It kind of takes the load off of, you know, Ryan and and myself and anybody else who's been um, presenting. So think about teaching a lesson if you can. Even if you don't know much about it, it's a great way to learn even more. So take that opportunity if at all possible. Yeah, and the only thing I'll say about that is, <clears throat> excuse me, there are 30 chapters in the, in the book. We are on chapter 14 right now. Um, and then Colin has already claimed like three other chapters and some of them are probably short chapters. So it might be safe to say that there's like maybe 10 topics, maybe not even that many, maybe like seven or eight top, like real topics to go into in the rest of the book. So you're running out of time. If you know, if you sit around on the weekend and you're thinking, man, I, I want to teach one of these lessons, but I just, I'm going to wait one more week. Your time is running out. <laughs> All I can say. <laughs> yeah. And, and if somebody wants to take one of the chapters I've taken, I'm more than happy to give it up. But anyways. Um, okay, cool. So uh, let's start off with, well, here's tonight's discussion. We're going to finish chapter 13 strings. We're going to finish our discussion of regular expressions. We're going to dive into the string R package, which is a package that is a core package to the tidyverse that gives a bunch of uses for regular expression. Bit of review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple of examples here for everybody, and just like we've done before in the past, we're going to kind of do a little whiz. So we'll see if everybody can kind of. Um, kind of jump in here real quick. So can everybody see my screen and see my examples that I have here? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So we're going to, we're going to use this vector called fruit. And so you've probably seen this vector before we've, we've used it. It was used for a couple of examples in the chapter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a regular expression. They're going to get harder as we go up in levels, but I want to see if somebody can explain well, I'll give you some multiple choice, but then maybe potentially explain what the regular expression actually is actually doing. So again, for this first couple of examples, we're going to use this fruit vector. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with level number one. And think of this as just taking this vector, turning it into a data frame, and then I'm going to filter out for specific types of fruit based on this regular expression. So looking at this one right here, so this example level number one, 
does anybody want to tell me what would be returned from this list given this? Is it going to be A, all fruits? Is it going to be B, is it going to be B fruits with the word fruit in its name? Or fruits where fruit is not in the name? Or am I going to get an error? What do you think? This is level number one. You put, you, you put uh, an option for an error. So that's going to make it a little bit more challenging, which is good. <laughs> if, if I was writing the code, I would go with D. But um, <laughs> since you wrote it, I'm going to go with B. Okay. So we got B. Give me a thumbs up if anybody else agrees with B. Got some thumbs up. Excellent. Let's just check it out. That's right. It was any fruit, or so it was B. It contains fruit in the name. So breadfruit, dragon fruit, grapefruit, jackfruit, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Let's go up a level. Let's see here. So same kind of pattern. It's going to return a data frame, but it's going to filter out for using this specific regular expression. Does anybody want to take a guess at what's going to happen here? Okay. So again, we're still using that fruit vector. And then we're filtering out based on this regular expression right here. Is it going to be A, fruits with a space in the name, or fruits that do not contain a space, or is it going to be fruits that have a space in the name and a character after the space, or is it going to be an error? What do you think? A, B, C, or D? Hmm. This one's challenging. Anybody want to be brave and on record? Give me a letter. Sandra, you got this one. <laughs> Let's see. What do you think? Hmm. I wonder that the, the, the encore is for something beginning by. Okay, so are you saying B, Sandra? Uh, no, it's just that it's something it should begin by a, by a space. Oh, ah, okay. So that kind of narrows it down. Do you think B or C? I would say C, but uh, yeah, C. Okay, excellent. So let's just take a look. So it is C, and actually it is... I don't think this actually worked like I wanted it to. So, oh no, excuse me, I messed that up. It should be, um, it should be anything that, any fruit that doesn't contain a space and a character, I think is what it's supposed to say. Sorry about that, this was a bad example. I thought it was gonna work because I thought this would be like a capturing group basically saying, if it has a space, any fruit that doesn't have a space and a character should be included, but I don't understand why bell pepper got included. So uh, this was a bad example. So I apologize for that one. So poor example, but um, that was what I was intending to do with this one. All right, let's go to level number three. So hopefully these examples work. I'm on record for being wrong now. So <laughs> people are gonna go back and watch this and be like, man, is this, does this person know regular expressions? Um, so, so let's yeah, on that one. So did it return everything? How many were there? How many total um, fruits are there? Think it. Eighty. Of eighty fruits, so you would think. You would think that it should be. So I, the uh, the carrot, the carrot character. When it's right there, it means um, not, right? Yeah, so it should. So basically, this is like a capturing group. So it's basically saying that anything, any symbols that are within this, capture it. Um, but then when we put this kind of like carrot in the front, it says everything except for this. But for some reason, it's not capturing it. So I wonder if I took away this right here, if it would do what I was intending for it to do. Yep, there. Well, no, it still takes bell pepper. Hmm. So gonna... were you looking for a parentheses or the, um, or the square brackets? 
Um, I was looking for the square brackets because I thought in the book it basically meant that if, you know, because this, because we have the white space in here. So I was thinking it would take out any fruit that had these or it would return any fruits that didn't have this. Go ahead. But I saw that um, the, he means that beginning by the, the character like that. I saw that. So I, so for me, it's a reason bell pepper is included because anyway, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't begin by a space. Oh, uh, maybe. Because I thought like if you did like carrot, like, you know, E or A or something like this, it would mean exclude everything that doesn't have like a vowel E and A. So maybe we can try to, to put a, yeah, okay. To, Let's but, see. But we don't have fruit beginning by EA. Maybe try to put a, a AP. No, no it still I mean, returns it. Hmm. You still have a pearl. That's odd. I think Go what ahead. happens is that when you have the power sign, but you put the bracket. So when you have the power sign alone, then it means the beginning of a of a string. Mm -hmm. But when you put it the the power sign, but you have the brackets, mm -hmm. and like he has, like Colin has, then it means everything but AP in this case, everything but whatever is next to the power sign. Mm -hmm. So in yeah, so inside the square brackets, I think it means not. Right. <clears throat> Anything but I wonder if, if if what's happening is that it's not recognizing that you are telling it you want the space. And so what if you try right there slash slash s? I think that's the symbol for space, I think. Yeah, still I'm still getting bell pepper, huh? I thought that the square bracket is not excluding, it's including everything which is starting with the space. And... Yeah, but I, th I thought that's what the carrot does. It says everything except. No, it says everything starting with. Uh, okay, okay. Well, maybe we'll have to dig into this example. So this was kind of a poor example. I kind of threw these kind of together quickly as a quick review. So um, maybe I'll kind of, what I'll do is I'll kind of, dig into this a little bit further. What I was trying to do here was I was trying to exclude any fruit that had that, you know, that split, that space. So, yeah. Um, so regular expressions are hard. Uh, <laughs> what if you put a, an exclamation mark before the, does that work here? So like the filter? Oh, no, I mean like. String detect. Yeah, probably. Let's see. Now it returns nothing. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, for the sake of time, I think we'll, I think we'll, we'll, I'll revisit this and add something in the Slack, but yeah, that's for some reason that doesn't make sense why that's not working, but um, I'll dig into it a little bit more. All right. So let's go to this one here. Hopefully this one works. Does anybody want to take a guess at what's happening? What's going to happen here? Is it going to be, uh, what's going to be matched? Is it going to be all fruits? Is it going to be fruits with the word berry in its name? Is it going to be fruits where berry is not in the name or is an error going to be returned? What do you think? <laughs> so is it going to be all fruits? Is it going to be fruits with a berry? Fruits where berry is not in the name or an error will be returned? B. Okay, so someone says B. I think it's going to be B. Let's run it and let's just check. Yep, so we have every word that contains berry. I would say berry. Has Bill to be berry. Berry. It's not just berry. It's berry at the end. Yep, berry and the end. Yeah, so it's going to have like any, it's going to have like any, anything. Yeah, very, very at the end because the it's dollar sign. Is, yeah, because the dollar sign is anchoring it at the end. Yeah. <clears throat> it's very excellent. Let's, right. go to, let's just do one more here. Uh, let's go to number. Let's go to number five. Um, my favorite one. There's going to be. There's this data set called Star Wars in. So hopefully there's any Star Wars fans here. 
Uh, there's a data set called Star Wars in Tidyverse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vector of names here. And so here's all the names of the different characters in Star Wars. Um, and so my question is, given this regular expression, which character will be returned? So do I have any Star Wars fans here? I've heard of some of these people. <laughs> <laughs> This person is not the most popular character in the Star Wars universe. I think you will get the Jar Jar because you have the space right after Jar. Yep, so I will get Jar Jar Binks there and Jar Jar Binks will come up again because there's another way to find Jar Jar Binks using back references, which we'll talk about next. So. Thanks for playing along. Uh, the, the person leading the lesson didn't do a good job with some of the examples, but hopefully it gave you a chance to kind of do some debugging of regular expressions. Yeah, so. no, all good. Can you go back to the one right before the level four? Uh, yeah, sure. We can talk the, about this one. Uh, the one that had the berry in it. Oh, the berry. Yeah, level three. We didn't do level four. Yeah. So, so as I'm looking at this, it's going to, you have the capture group inside of the parentheses. So it's yep. going to choose anything with a lowercase a through z mm -hmm. or anything with a lowercase a through z. And then the Should double black backsplash b is for a literal character b. Right. Yeah. And actually this should be a S because what I want is a white space. Cause what I'm looking for, which should be captured here. I thought there was a couple fruits in here. Cause here like goji berry, it has a space. And so this was the B would have been a literal care. Well, I don't know. I think B was maybe new line. I can't remember. It was a special character, but yeah. I was actually looking for white space. And so I was looking for any fruit that contained berry but to capture these fruits that had a space within it, I had to include this within some type of capture group. So yeah. basically um, capture any fruit that has A through Z without a space or A through Z, any characters with a white space. Yeah. And then this says like, uh, it was it zero or more? So we can have zero or more of those. Uh-huh. And then Barry. The issue is, is that if there was a double space within this too, it should capture it too, because we're basically saying right here, any white space. So if like someone you know, was entering these in and hit like double space or something, should still capture it. But yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So excellent. I think most of us are, are getting our heads around like the basics of regex. So again, hopefully this was like a quick review. I'll post this when we get done talking tonight so you can look it over and pick it up and and we can figure out what's going wrong with this one because it's not doing what I expected it to do. So anyways, cool. Excellent. So let's kind of jump up where we were last time. And we were talking about grouping and back references. And I had to take a second to kind of think about what uh, I had to go back to this and think about what the grouping and back references do. Um, the best way that I can put this is it allows you to like capture repetition by looking backwards. And so someone please correct me if I'm wrong with that one. It took me a little bit to kind of wrap my mind around it. But again, we're taking that vector of fruits. And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for any two characters that are repeated. And I, I can't remember what this one was for. And someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but it was looking for like, it repeats one time. So if like these two characters repeat one time, then match it. And so like banana, um, cucumber, papaya, so on and so forth, because there's an AN and then it repeats AN again backwards, it's going to capture that as well. So it took me a second to wrap my mind around that, but I think that's what that one was. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So like if it was like a two, it would be AN, AN, AN. If it was three and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, I think the way that that it looks at it is like the the first what you've specified up to the one is like group one, and so what it's looking for is like all of those characters, and then it calls those 
group one, followed by number one, which is that same thing that you just, it's almost like a, like a name or a variable name that, that you're giving it or that the system gives it automatically. Unless, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but um, does that make sense? So it's like you've specified what group you want and it gives that num as number one. And then you put the number one there afterwards saying, I wanna find group number one again. And so um, if you were to put another one after that, then it would be looking for A-N, 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 C-O, C-O, C-O. We should check that though. So I'm gonna check it while we're, while we're talking. Yeah, this like back references were like the ones that I had a little trouble understanding. Like I, I think I like understand it at like an intuitive level, but I couldn't like explain what the syntax was and what it actually means. So um, does anybody else have any any idea of, or other way to think of this? You know, I think for me that the cheat sheet at the very, very end. I think it has a very intuitive explanation that I always go back to when I am kind of lost the very, very end at the corner, bottom, um, right there. Mm -hmm. So you see that the, the first group is A and the second group is B. Oh, okay. Okay, so the first group is A. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the second group is B. So then if you call the second group, which is B, and then the first group, which is A, you get A, B, and B, then A. B, A. Oh, okay. I so see. It's like position. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So, okay. I think I see what you're saying. So it's like... Uh, so the first parentheses are there. Like A, oh. the first, in this... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the first parentheses there where it just has the A gets called number one. And then the parentheses with the B gets called number two. And then when it comes to the back reference, you're now looking for two, which is B, followed by one, which is A. Oh, okay, that, that clears that up. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's that's that that that's doing mind tricks with me because that that's I see what. I see how complicated that can get really quick. So, okay. Yeah. So this one I struggled with a little bit because I've never done any back referencing like that. So that kind of clears that up um, for sure. Uh, let's see. That's a quick quiz. So I thought of it like this. I thought about, I don't know if this is correct now with the explanation that people have provided, but I was thinking that you could maybe use it like this to pick up the name Jar Jar Binks. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like here's a duplicate jar jar with a space, jar jar with a space. Uh, right now I'm not as confident in this one now. Was this correct? To somebody who's a little more of an expert in this, could you could you confirm or or not confirm this? You may take some some fiddling around with it, but it it seems pretty close. Because here's the three characters, right? One, two, three, followed oh. by a white space. Yeah. Right? And so, and then we're counting that as group one. And so it repeats it twice. Yeah. So then it picks up the only name that is, that has that, you know, that kind of pattern to it. So this is like where the, the most complex version of regex got in the chapter. And I'm sure it probably gets a little bit more um, a little bit more, regex definitely goes a lot further than this, but like this one, I just, I, I have trouble wrapping my mind around and, and this was what I came up with as an example to kind of figure it out. Um, but if anybody has any, any other, um, if anybody has any other examples that they could share or think of, please do. Cause this back and back referencing, I had a hard time wrapping my mind around. Um, okay, so that's regular expressions in a nutshell. Again, that's the very, very, very tip of the iceberg. Let's kind of talk about it in, uh, in relation to like tidyverse tools. And so the book talks about the tools for string operations. And again, the book kind of highlights that, that string R uh, provides a set of tools for common operations on strings. And so 
some of the common operations that string R has a function for is to matches, matches, replacing matches with new values and then splitting strings based on a match. And so I tried, I tried while I was going through the book to create like a visualization of what this kind of looks like of what the different operations are and the different functions. And I've included this within Slack if you want it. Uh, again, this was an attempt. I wasn't real happy with the way it turned out. But basically all this diagram does is it says, hey, what do you want to do with this string? Okay, what function should I use? And then what example, you know, is there any examples that I can refer to? And so what I also did is I provided this kind of notebook that kind of goes over some examples that like look over some of these functions. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these because I don't think it would be totally worth our time, but I think I can go over a couple of these to kind of talk about some of the common ones that I've used before. If there's one that somebody wants to talk about a little bit more, just let me know. I, I have an example for it. But let's just kind of, again, we're using string R, which is part of the tidyverse package. Let's take some cities. Uh, I tried my best to use cities from people in the group, mostly Ryan, myself, and, and Sandra, everybody. Oh, New York City. I got New York City from Monza, so that's good. Uh, we used to have a person named Bruno, and I think he was from Rio de Janeiro, so, but we'll include him. And then so um, we're just going to take this vector here. And then so like some basic ones that I've used before was like string length. If you want to count the number of strings in the city, you can right here. So Lincoln, Houston, and Calgary each have seven characters in them. So uh, hopefully I spelled them correctly. So but seven, seven, seven. Oh, even New York. No, not New York City. New York City has 13. Even Chicago has seven. So um, we can do some combining. I didn't know about string C because I've used paste and paste zero, but that's the one that I've been using lately now. I've actually switched over to using string C, but you have two different options where you can just do, um, where you can just combine all of them or you can combine them with a separator, like a comma or something. So Lincoln, Calgary, Houston. Um, I don't really use string sub, but the ones that I've used were like string upper to string lower. So if you wanna go to a lowercase or uppercase, same thing. So string to upper, pretty intuitive, goes all the way to upper. If you want to go all the way lower, I do this. One thing where I use string to lower quite a bit is if like, if like customer reviews, because I work in marketing, something that I'll always do is because not every, because some people, they like to put their caps lock on and leave it on for some reason. And so their comments are always in caps. I don't know if they're yelling at us or, or what they're doing, but I, I just think it's a mistake more than anything. But so something I do when I do like text cleaning is, is I'll just kind of turn everything into a lowercase, just turn it all a lowercase. It just makes it easier. Um, because then if you're trying to match certain words, then you know that they're all lowercase. I don't know if that's good practice, but it's just something that I found to work for the data that I work with. Um, I've used string sort. So string sort's great. So if I want to sort by alphabetics, I can do string sort. So does anybody want to take a guess when I do string sort, what city will come back first? Does anybody want to take a guess? Calgary. Calgary should come first because it's going to be alphabetical. So Calgary will come first, then Chicago, then Houston, then Lincoln, New York City, Rio de Janeiro from there. Um, I use string detect quite a bit. So if I want to detect all cities that contain the vowel I, again, you can use any type of regular expression matching with this. I use this a lot for like when you do like a, like a, when you do like a filter or something and you want to filter out for certain words, I use string detect quite a bit to do it. And you've seen it in those examples before, but all it does is it just returns like a Boolean true or false when it detects it. So, um, and you got to think of it because it's not in order anymore. But so if I take city, look at city. Lincoln does have a I. Houston does not. Calgary does not. New York City does. So um, I use string detect quite a bit. Uh, you can use such thing as string locate. So if you're trying to find specific ones, you can do use string locate. And then it will kind of give you where the start and the end is for each one. And then... 
the other one that I use quite a bit too is string extract. So if I want to take out all, all the lower case vowels in the cities, I can use string extract. I can use, and the difference between the two is string extract is it's only going to take the first vowel. But if you want all the vowels, you need to use the string extract all. So this one will take the first, the, this one. So you can see, in, uh, oh, so on and so forth. I think this one was kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around when I first started to learn it because you think string extract, well, it should extract any vowel. No, it's only going to take the first one. So if you want all of them, you need to use the prefixed string extract all to get all the vowels to match. And then um, string replace, I've used quite a bit too. So if just say you want to replace every single vowel with the number nine, I don't know where or when you would want to do this, but just to kind of show an example, same thing. But with string replace, it's going to have also the string replace all. So string replace is only going to uh, change the first vowel. String replace all is going to change all, all the vowels. So you can see the difference between those two. And then there's split. Um, split's kind of nice if you want to split a certain thing. So if I want to split them by white space, so New York City, you can split them up into separate ones, so on and so forth. But that was just kind of a basic rundown of all the string functions. To be honest, if you have trouble remembering some of these functions, a good trick that I found is that if you're trying to find a string function, because there's a lot of them, just type str in your in your console, and then it will pop up all the different string functions that are available to you. And it's kind of nice how the package, how Tidyverse, how the Tidyverse has designed the string R package, is that it will give you like a quick explanation of what each one does. So usually I find myself going through this and being like, oh, I, I remember that I want to do this string operation, and I can go through and look through them all. So. Uh, what questions or comments does anybody have about these common string operations or ones that you were looking for that maybe aren't available or, or just any general comments? What, what gets to me is trying to remember what the, what the return values are going to be. Um, and so like even just now, I was just over here on the other screen. I was doing the, the Barry one that you had from before. Mm -hmm. And because my question that I had in my mind was, um, you know, you had done the one where it was like find A through Z or A through Z with a space and then with the word Barry on the end. Mm -hmm. And my thought was, well, could you do it by just putting Barry and not the A through Z and the A through Z space. And so I tried that, but all it did was come back with the word Barry. Every time that it said Barry, the return was just the word Barry. So it was like, it didn't have straw, it just said Barry. And it didn't have black, it just said Barry. And like, that's not really what I needed. I needed to know all of the different values that have Barry in it. So. Anyway, so I think what would be hard and what would take a lot of practice is remembering like, no, if I only look for the word Barry, it's just going to give me the word Barry back. And so, and even with like the extract, I think it was extract returns true and false mm -hmm. or, um, and so trying to just remember what the return values are. Yeah. So that comes down to knowing the string R the string R package functions because they all have their own return value. Like you said, with string extract, if you did Barry, it's just going to return like the actual letters, B-E-R-Y. It's not going to return like the full yeah. like thing. So that's where when like, if you look at some of the examples that I've done in here, like I had to like turn them into a tibble and then do like the filter. So like, uh, not that. So like these ones, like I had to first take like the month name turn it into a tibble. Well, that's mutates and string detect. Yeah, this is the same thing, but yeah. I've also done like a filter too, where like you can filter it out. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of it. Yeah, like this right here with the Jar Jar Binks example, I did the filter and then included the string detect because it's first 
uh, it's first looking, it's turning it into a logical and then it's returning it based on, you know, that true or false based on this match or this regular expression. Okay. So I, I see where the struggle comes in, like just knowing what function it is. I, I tried to simplify it here, you know, thinking about what are you trying to do yeah. and look at it and trying to go through this and be like, okay, well, if I want to like find the position or I want to extract a match. Yeah. You know, but in practice, like I said before, I usually find myself, I can't remember is it, is it, look at them and see if I can get it to work and, and figure it out from there. So, yeah. but in practice, that's what I usually do. Good question. Any, anybody else? Okay. So let's, let's keep moving on here. Um, so these are, these are the, you know, these are the tools and the operations, you know, I kind of shared some examples. I'm going to put the example, the examples are already on um, a thread within the actual zoom link. I highly suggest that you look at this cheat sheet. I linked it in the presentation itself. Um, again, there's probably functions that uh, you know, are better suited for your needs or are not discussed in the book or were discussed here. So this is a great to like bring some and it provides some examples for you and, and it does a pretty good job of like putting these cheat sheets together for everybody. Uh, so check out the examples. Um, this kind of the discussion of the string R functions that are available. Again, they're just used for common operations. Um, we'll talk about the string R, the string I package here in a second. So if there's some other uh, string manipulation or string things you need to do with strings, we'll talk about it here in a second. Um, I, I think this is a prop OS, I think is how you say it. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But this is another uh, good kind of example of how to use regular expressions when working in R. This function here, what it's going to do is it's going to find objects in your global environment. And so the book talked about this example. If you're trying to remember like a function uh, or you're trying to remember or try and find an object that's in your R session that you're using, you can use this function to use like regular expression matching to find all of them that contain those names in it. So I think of it like a data object. Like if you, if you have like a really long analysis and you can't remember what you saved it as, you could use this to kind of quickly find it or see if it's even in your global environment. So the other example that it talks about in the book for other, um, other uses for regular expressions is with the directory. And I've used this quite a bit. And this will come up again when we talk about iteration because I find myself doing this quite, quite a bit as well, is that it's usually used if you're trying to find like some file extension. So I work a lot with that CSV. So sometimes what I do is I'm looking in a directory trying to find all of the CSV files. And in, and in my case, within the project that I have for this book, I have a full... Uh, samples, but if I try and find those CSV files or what their names are, I can use this function directory, give it the path, and then give it this pattern right here, basically saying, hey, match any file that ends in CSV. And so this is really nice for one, trying to find files, but we'll also talk about it when it gets to iteration, when if we have a bunch of CSV files that we have to import. And so it comes up again. So this is a pretty powerful tool that I use quite a bit. I'm sure other people have. I think Monsa mentioned last time that she's used this quite a bit too. So um, this will come up again, but a nice little a use case for it. So what if string R doesn't have what you need? Uh, there is another package out there that's more comprehensive. The book kind of talks about it in the last section. It's called the string I. Uh, you can kind of dig more into it. Um, it provides a lot of different functions beyond just what the base string R package has. And in fact, some of the functions are, so string R is built from 
string i and so some of it's just kind of built as a wrapper around it and so string i just provides that more comprehensive types of um, functions out there and you can kind of dig into it and i just just for just for fun i just kind of went through it and it was looking okay what what functions are there that i may potentially use and i have a couple of examples of some of these functions that i thought were kind of interesting so i brought in the string i package here. You'll have to install it if you don't have it, but there's this stir I reverse. So again, I'm going to use all these Star Wars character names. Um, if you want to reverse the, each individual string, like if you wanted to go from, instead of for Luke Skywalker, take the R and then switch them all, there's this function called stir I reverse. And so you could run that. Oh, I got to load in the library. Sorry. It would reverse every single every single one of your strings. So uh, I don't know if it's really a good use case for this, but there may be certain things where you know you have that you have to switch these around. Uh, another one that I thought was really interesting was this um, ENC detect. Uh, I know there are some people here that may be working with data that's in different languages other than English. Uh, so what this does is it tries to detect the um, language and the encoding for all of these. So sorry, there's a lot of output, but what it does is it will look at each one of these and it will give you an output on what type of encoding. So go through and you can kind of see for each name what it potentially is. And, and I thought that was kind of neat. So you might be able to figure out like with some of these names in Star Wars, what language was the base for that name. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The last one that I found, uh, this kind of string I stats general, this one could give you some just general stats for strings within that vector. And so if you're interested as well, have someone in. so Colin as I think they should know yeah um you're breaking up just a Did little I cut off yeah just a little bit on that last one do you um do you mind going over that last one again stats general yeah yeah sure uh sorry about that my internet connection's been going in and out so sorry about that but yeah so like this one right here I just thought was kind of interesting it gives you some basic stats on all the characters uh, for each one of your string items within that vector. And so it will give you like kind of summary too as well, like how many characters are in it, how many white white space characters are in there and stuff. So I don't know. I just kind of went through it. I just kind of went through string I and was like, okay, are there any functions that aren't in string R that are in string I that might be useful? These are a couple, but I, I encourage everybody to go look at it and see if there's other functions that you might find useful too. So Again, it, I think the book talks about that because it's really saying string R functions are for just have functions for common string operations. And so it's not the end all be all for everything strings. And if you're looking for something more robust, go look at string I. So uh, I think that's everything that I have. So questions, comments, discussion. Um, but that's basically strings in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. It's, um, it's, I think it's one of the things to practice for sure. It's challenging. I, I don't know. I think I may have bit off more than I can chew because I struggle with some of these things. So, All good. Uh, and it's recorded. So if anybody in the future finds out that I did something wrong, you know, tweet at me, send me an email, <laughs> be nice to me, but uh yeah just just let me know yeah thank you so much this was super helpful and i learned a lot of things that i didn't know before yeah the quiz was very helpful <laughs> yeah once you once you like get challenged to do it then you're like okay now i really have to know this so um but yeah like i said it's just it's one of those things where you have to practice and I think we talked about that one book. It's like 700 pages long or something. So this is like the very, 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 very tip of all of this. So. 
Right. Anybody have any questions or comments? Good. Okay. Thanks, Colin. We can we can leave it there. So so chapter fourteen is done. Nicely tied up. Um, next week is factors. Um, so I'll do factors unless anybody else wanted to. Don't let me stop you. Um, if anybody wants to do factors, so we got factors and then dates and times, which are both going to be good, good topics to go over. Um, we'll see how far we get. And then Colin, you have to remind me which was the next one that you wanted to pick up. Was it functions or I think, who was it? I think I said I would take functions and iteration, but uh, people can, anybody can jump in on those if they want. Okay. Good. All right, we'll, we'll plan on doing factors. I'll plan on doing factors next week then and we'll see how far we get. Um, is everybody getting some, some like a chance to go through the exercises at all? Do you guys take the time to do it or is this mostly just a review or maybe you're using it mostly in your work anyway and so the, the exercises are just um, kind of unnecessary because you're always working on them? I try them. Yeah. I try them. Uh, some of my, some of them, if they take too much time, I'll probably be like, oh, I'll come back to it. But yeah. yeah, I learned a lot from the, from doing the exercises. Yeah. Many more functions than are covered in the book. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I've gotten some benefit out of those. And then you know, when you look at the other solutions, the solution manuals that are out there and Sometimes the solution manuals are like, there's no good solution to this problem, but here's what I came up with. And uh, <laughs> I like to think that, that I'm on that level because I also couldn't come up with a solution. So, um, okay, I think that's it. I hope everybody has a great week and hit us up in the Slack if you, if you have any questions or if you need anything. Before you go, I wanted to ask you, well, tell you something and ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I think, I think I'm going to share a link of some exercises that I have done for a string R. And, and these have, these have been very helpful for me. Uh, some of them, they, like they, I think they go in progressive order. Yeah. So, so they have been very helpful to me. So you might also find them um, helpful. And also I wanted to ask you how to get into the roster for presenting, is that something that you, that is, is organic meaning in, during no. the meeting we tell you? There, or? No. You, can, you can say it right now, you can hit me up in the Slack. There, there's no organization to it. Um, I kind of take on whatever lessons anybody doesn't want to to do but if you want to do one then all you need to do is just say that we'll take what we'll take a, a chapter and it's yours so um on on this uh, this link that you sent here maria there are exercises so i have come across this one but i i can't figure out how to start or how to progress through them because I thought it looked good and I do want to just do like exercise after exercise, but I couldn't ever figure out like, where does this start? What do you do next? Anything like that. Would you be able to talk about that next week and like show everybody how you've used this, what, this website and how you progress through it? Yeah. I mean, uh, for every, essentially what I do is for every chapter of, of the R4 data science book. Uh -huh. I look uh, whether or not this website has a, has a set of exercises for that chapter. Okay. It, most often they do have a set of exercises, but sometimes they don't. Okay. And so if they do, I, I go through them because I feel like sometimes, I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good thunderstorm. <laughs> but anyway, so sometimes I, I the, sometimes I feel like the exercises in R for data science, um, 
sometimes they are not very applied or not very helpful or they ask you to search for the, a lot of details about a function. But yeah. I feel like the exercises of this website are usually more hands-on and, and coding and yeah. yeah. So that's my, my process. Um, would you, do you mind taking maybe five or 10 minutes next week and just show us how, what you did and like pull up a chapter from the book and see how you went and looked at it in the R exercises and that kind of thing? That'd be okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Great. I'll try to remind you um, before we get to that point. But I have been known not to remind people of stuff that um, <laughs> that we were going to cover the following week. So, but I'll try to remind you. Um, okay. That's great. Other than that, we will do factors next week and uh, stay safe. And congratulations, guys. You're. I think we're all doing really well. We're learning a lot, and it's uh, it's nice to come together each week. So you guys take care and we will see you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.